Hey, uh, this is Will Martin, and today I just want to talk a little bit about uh, suspension geometry and steering radius. Um, so I took my front suspension and I plotted out a 3D uh, sketch of where the tires are uh, and then where the main uh, A-arm axes are. And so what you can see here is, uh, for example, where this line and this, where is it? So where this line, yeah, this line and this line intersect way out here. That's the instant center. Then you connect a line to that and you take that line over to the contact patch on the opposite side. You do the same thing for the other side. And then where those, those two intersect, uh, that is your roll center. So, um, the car essentially rolls about that point in space. And this is a line between the two contact patches. So you see right now it's uh, a little bit above, the the roll center is a little bit above uh, the, the street, which is good. You want it to be above ground. Um, but it's not quite where I want it to be. So let me show you the problem here. Uh, if you, you know, jump the car and the, and the tires hop up uh, pretty far, like there, uh, let me click save and that will redo the sketch. There you see, now the roll center is below ground. And the worst thing that you can have is a car where the roll center moves up through the ground plane uh, as, as the suspension is moving around because it, it'll make the car uh, unpredictable, it'll make it squirmy, um, so it'll be hard to handle. So um, I need to work on the pickup points for the suspension A-arms uh, to determine uh, suspension geometry that will allow me to keep the roll center above uh, above the center, uh, sorry, above the ground plane but below the center of mass. Um, you always want it to be above the ground plane and below the center of mass of the, of the vehicle. Um, so that's one thing I got to work on. Um, and then another thing I did is I did the same thing for the rear suspension. Let me show you that. Uh, so I put in where the contact patch is of, of the rear tire. Uh, and then if you put that all together, it gives you the full car with the sketches. And what that allows me to do is figure out, for example, the distance uh, from the rear contact patch to the front of the car, which is 2.235 meters. And then I can do the same thing and figure out the distance between the front contact patches here. Let me do that. Ah. Well, you got to take my word for it. It's uh, 1.291 meters is what it came out to. So um, using that, I can then determine the uh, turning circle based on um, how, you know, how much steering angle I can get. And one of the things that uh, people were bringing up in the comments of these videos and on local motors is uh, why don't I switch the way that I do the front suspension uh, connections or the, or the bearings? Why don't I change these 90 degrees? Right now, um, they are set like this horizontally, and they're limited by the maximum misalignment of the rod end bearings. Uh, so what I could do potentially is move these perpendicular, and then... I could tilt the car an infinite number of degrees, essentially, or, or it would be a different limit, but it would be a, a, quite a bit more degrees of lean, uh, and then I would be limited to whatever the maximum misalignment is of the rod end bearings for the steering angle. And so these rod end bearings are 21 degrees. I was able to find some uh, spherical bearings, uh, which are probably better anyways, because in suspension design, you're never supposed to have uh, what's called... Uh, a rod in bending. So as you can see here, there's a uh, force going up through this rod end and that creates a bending force on this piece right here. Um, and, you know, bending force on a small piece of steel uh, is a recipe for disaster that that could break. Um, so traditionally, uh, you don't want to have rod ends in bending. Um, what you do is have spherical bearings uh, that you would load into a bigger structure. So um, what I was thinking of doing is, is 
taking spherical bearings, putting them perpendicular to this axis, which will allow me to have more uh, steering angle, or sorry, more tilt angle. And let me show you what that looks like. So here is my turning radius simple sketch. Now this is the car, okay? It's hard, kind of hard to understand here, but this is the the front middle of the car. This is the left tire contact patch that point. This is the right tire contact patch that point. This is the rear tire contact uh, patch point. Um, and again, as I was saying, it's 2.2 uh, meters down, 1.29 meters across. Um, and then what you can do is, uh, you know, if I have a spherical rod and bearing that has a maximum misalignment angle of 23 degrees, I take a uh, line that is per that is 23 degrees to a perpendicular line from uh, the front of the car. And then what I can do is I can take a, a circle on the line of the rear tire and make it tangent to this line. So I made these two tangent. You can see there's the symbol for the tangent. And it'll give you the uh, the turning radius of the car. So in this case, the turning radius of the car is 11.4 meters. Uh, and so is that good? Is that bad? Uh, I was able to find a website that had uh, 800 different cars, uh, current cars for sale. Uh, here's the list of all of them. Um, so these are all these cars, uh, and here are their turning circle in feet. I converted them to meters, and then I charted it out. Uh, so here's the chart, and just going back to what I just said, uh, this car with a 23 degree uh, maximum misalignment of a spherical uh, bearing would give me 11.4 meters of turning uh, radius. And if you look at cars out on the road today, 11.5 meters turning radius is the standard. It's the center of the bell curve of uh, turning radius. At the very high end, you have, I believe this is the Rolls-Royce Phantom that has a terrible 15 meter turning radius. And the best car currently for sale is the Mitsubishi Mirage and the Toyota Yaris with a 9.2 and 9.6 meter turning uh, radius. Obviously, city cars, uh, you want to have a better turning radius. Um, so I think I'm pretty happy with having an 11.4 meter uh, turning radius. Uh, and that would allow me to have a lot more tilt angle on the car, which would make it a lot more fun. Um, so my next steps are I'm planning to... Uh, redesign the suspension arms uh, to incorporate spherical rod and bearings and also uh, change the lengths of them and potentially change the height of the pickup points um, to give me a roll center that is above the ground plane but below the center of mass. Uh, and that is, that's my, that's my goal from here on out uh, of my work uh, for the next few weeks. So uh, thanks for, for keeping up with uh, my project. Um, I'd love to hear the comments. Uh, you can follow me on, uh, subscribe to the YouTube page, uh, go to willmartin.com. You can, can subscribe to email updates there, or you can go to localmotors.com and uh, search for my pro project on there and uh, leave me comments at any of those places. All right. Thanks, guys.